So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session guys, we are going to do the PIB news from 7th to 10th of November 2022 and I hope you guys are enjoying these sessions and are learning something from it. All right. So let's begin with the session without any delay. But uh, before we begin, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. And the link for this Telegram channel is provided in the description. All right. So let's talk about the very first question, which is about the National Bioenergy Program. So you have to identify the incorrect statement regarding the program. Right. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy headed by Mr. R.K. Singh uh, has recently notified the National Bioenergy Program. It seeks to utilize huge surplus biomass, cattle dung, industrial and urban bio waste uh, available in the country for recovery of energy. Right. So basically you have to identify the incorrect statement regarding National Bioenergy Program. So Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, remember this, not Ministry of Power. It is the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy which has launched it. And what is the objective through this program? Uh, the government wants to utilize the huge surplus biomass, cattle dung, industrial and urban bio waste which is there in the environment and using this surplus waste, the government wants to create energy. The government wants to generate energy. Right. And remember, this is not a new program. It is being implemented since 1980s. Actually, it has been continued now from financial year 21-22 to financial year 25-26. Right. And it will be implemented in two phases. And rupees 858 crores has been allocated for phase one. Right. Abhi phase one chalega, uske baad phase two aayega. All right. And there are three components under this scheme. Remember this number one waste to energy program. So what will happen under waste to energy program? So the government will provide support for setting up of large biogas, bio CNG and power plants. Right. And the outlay for this component is guys 600 crores out of 58. Right. Then we have biomass program under which the support will be provided for setting up of pellets and briquettes for use in power generation and non biogas based power generation project. Briquettes means what? The coal blocks, right? Briquettes ka matlab hota hai, coal blocks, chote chote jo coal ke blocks hote hai. These are known as what? Briquettes, right? And then the outlay for this biomass program is 158 crores out of 858. And finally, the third component is biogas program under which uh, the support will be provided for setting up of medium sized biogas plants in the rural areas with the total outlay of rupees 100 crores. Okay. So this is the uh, breakup of 858 crores, 600 crores for waste to energy program, 158 crores for biomass program and then biogas program ke liye 100 crore rupees. All right. So that is all about that. And now let's come back to the question. Incorrect statement nikalna hai. So national bioenergy program has been continued for period this to this. This is correct. It will be implemented in five phases, not five phases. So this will be the correct answer guys. Option B will be the correct answer because we have to identify that incorrect statement. Okay. Now moving ahead to question number two, identify a correct statement about electoral bond scheme. Now you must have heard about electoral bond scheme. Bar bar news mein aata hai. It is not, right now it is in news because uh, the recently uh, you know, jo tranche launch hote hai, bonds ke wo launch kiye gaye hai, right? The tranche or you can say a lot has been launched for electoral uh, bond scheme. So talking about this scheme guys, so remember it was launched in 2018 by Ministry of Finance. Now please don't get confused with the ele Election Commission of India. No, it was launched by Ministry of Finance and the objective is to cleanse the system of political funding in the country and bring transparency in it. जो हवाला का पैसा होता था जो कि पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के पास जाता था पहले ऐसा हुआ करता था उस सिस्टम को खत्म करने के लिए दिस इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड स्कीम वाज लॉन्च इन 2018 नाउ दीज आर बॉन्ड्स राइट दीज आर बॉन्ड्स सो दीज आर एक्चुअली द इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स लाइक इट इज अ बेरर इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन द नेचर ऑफ अ प्रॉमिसरी नोट एंड इंटरेस्ट फ्री है होता है ठीक है इंटरेस्ट फ्री बैंकिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट है ये जिसके बदले में हमें पैसा मिल जाता है जो भी बायर होता है राइट right? Bond mil jata hai aur uske baad fir hum usko redeem kara ke paisa le sakte hai. That is, this is the idea. Eligibility, it can be purchased only by the citizen of India. No foreigner, no RNI can buy it. Or body incorporate or established in India. Right. Individual person can buy these bonds jointly or in uh, single uh, account bhi ho sakta hai. Ya joint account bhi ho sakta hai. Right. 
and issue price these are rupees 1000 10000 1 lakh 10 lakh and 1 crores these are the different issue prices for these electoral bonds all right and beneficiaries only those political parties which are registered under section 29a of the representation of people act of 1951 and those parties which have secured less than uh, sorry at least 1% not less than 1% of the votes polled in the last Lok Sabha election or the state uh, assembly elections. ठीक है पिछला जो भी Lok Sabha यानि कि general election हुआ है उसमें या फिर state का जो assembly का election होता है उसमें at least one percent vote उस political party को मिलनी चाहिए. Only that political party can have the benefit of these uh, electoral bonds, right? And the bank, the issuing bank is only one. That is the State Bank of India. This question can be asked in your exam. And encashment इसकी की जा सकती है. These can be encashed. By an eligible political party only through a bank account with the authorized bank. And validity OTS ki 15 days from the date of issue. Right? It is valid only for 15 days from the date of issue. Alright? So that is all about this scheme. And now let's come back to the question. It was launched in 2018 by Election Commission of India. No, it was the Ministry of Finance. It can be purchased only by citizen of India or body incorporated or established in India, correct? All political parties are eligible to receive electoral bonds. No, not all political parties. There is a condition of having 1% vote, right? And parties registered under section 29A of RPA 1951. Electoral bonds is valid only for 15 days, right? And all banks have been authorized to issue. No, not all banks, only State Bank of India. So only 2 and 4 are correct, which means option B, guys, will be the correct answer. I hope this question is clear. Moving ahead to question number 3. Identify correct statements about Mangrove Alliance for Climate. This is something new which has been launched uh, during this uh, COP27 which is going on right now in Sharmal Sheikh city of Egypt. So India has joined the Mangrove Alliance uh, for Climate which has been launched on the sidelines of 27th COP of uh, UNFCCC, United Nation Framework Convention on Climate Change. Right now what is this Mangrove Alliance for Climate? Right? What is the objective? So, of course, when we are talking about mangroves, so we must be talking about the conservation of uh, mangroves, we must be talking about the plantation, more and more plantation of the mangroves, right? So, to scale up the conservation, restoration and plantation efforts of mangrove ecosystem for the benefit of uh, communities and then to recognize the importance of these ecosystems for climate change mitigation and adaptation, okay? So, Ram Sai clear, hai. we are talking about mangrove, we are doing a mangrove alliance, which means we are talking about the conservation of mangroves, we are talking about more and more plantation of mangroves and ultimately we are talking about climate change and its mitigation, right? It is spearheaded by United Arab Emirates, uh, Emirates in partnership with Indonesia. It was launched recently, 2022 at COP27. If you ask when launch hua hai, you can tell sakte ho. In the year 2022, and these are the members till now: India, UAE, Indonesia, Australia, Japan, Spain, and Sri Lanka. These are the members till now. Aage aur bhi honge. Let's see. So, incorrect statement nikalna hai It has been launched by on the sidelines of COP27. Correct. It is spearheaded by UAE in partnership with Indonesia. Correct. It aims to recognize the importance of mangrove ecosystems. Uh, for climate change mitigation and adaptation, this is also correct. And all members of UNEP, including India, have joined this initiative. No, it is not like that. All members of UNEP have not joined it. So this is incorrect, which means the correct answer will be option D because we have to identify the incorrect statement. All right, option D is the correct statement, guys. Question number four. Recently, Union Minister of Jal Shakti Gajendra Singh Shekhawat released the dynamic groundwater resource assessment report for the entire country for the year 22. What is the annual groundwater extraction in the country as per the report? Okay, in this way, detail mein jana nahi hai. only two facts are important for the examination. It was this assessment, remember, was carried out jointly by Central Groundwater Board and States and UTs. Okay, it, it was a joint effort of this organization, Central Groundwater Board. And all the states and UTs, jahan jahan pe bhi ye assessment kiya gaya. All right. Yeah, it was carried out earlier in 1985, uh, 95, 2004, 2009, 2011, 13, 17, and 2020. 
राइट तो ये कोई नया इनिशिएटिव नहीं है एंड इट कैन बी यूज फॉर टेकिंग सुटेबल इंटरवेंशन नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्राउंड वाटर असेसमेंट सो आफ्टर असेसिंग द लेवल्स ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर वी कैन मेक द पॉलिसी अकॉर्डिंगली राइट एंड विच टू डेटा आर इंपॉर्टेंट दीज आर द टू annual ground water extraction it was 239.16 bcm that is billion cubic meters and total annual ground water recharge was 437.60 billion cubic meters you just have to remember these two data iske zyada aapko padhne ki zarurat nahi hai all right so this question was regarding the annual ground water extraction so therefore 239.16 bcm is the correct answer billion cubic meters okay आगे चलते हैं 19 क्वेश्चन आर देयर टुडे द रिपोर्ट ऑफ एक्सपर्ट कमेटी ऑन स्वामित्व स्कीम वाज रिलीज ड्यूरिंग द नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन स्वामित्व स्कीम एंड रूरल प्लानिंग द कमेटी वाज फॉर्म टू प्रोवाइड द गाइडिंग प्रिंसिपल्स फॉर स्टेट्स टू होलिस्टिकली रियलाइज द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ द स्वामित्व स्कीम हु इज द चेयरपर्सन ऑफ द कमेटी सो देर वॉज अ कमेटी विच वॉज फॉर्म बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रूरल डेवलपमेंट टू गिव सर्टेन गाइडलाइंस अबाउट हाउ वी कैन मेक मोर इफेक्टिव दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम राइट सो you have to uh, tell the name of the chairperson of the committee remember the chairperson of this committee is mr b k agarwal and this committee was formed to provide the guidelines uh, for states to holistically realize the objectives of swamitva scheme right and what are some of the major recommendations number one this committee has recommended to create systems for promoting transparency in the implementation of the scheme ठीक है दैट इज दैट्स वेरी बेसिक रिकमेंडेशन देन इट हैज रिकमेंडेड टू प्रमोट द एडॉप्शन ऑफ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ राइट्स फॉर अवेलिंग द लोन्स राइट कि जो रिकॉर्ड ऑफ राइट्स बन रहे हैं स्वामित्व स्कीम में उसके उसके एक्सचेंज में लोन्स लिए जा सके उसके बारे में उसको प्रमोट करना एंड टू डेवलप लिंकेजेस बिटवीन डिफरेंट डिपार्टमेंट्स फॉर इन्फॉर्म्ड डिसीजन मेकिंग रिलेटेड टू प्रॉपर्टी टैक्स असेसमेंट then adoption of rural area development plan formalize formulation and implementation and finally wider adoption of swamitva data sets by government and private agencies as per the new geo special guidelines now of course ye wale jo guidelines hai these are of no use in objective questions they are not going to ask but yeah it can be uh, very useful in the descriptive answers jo bhi aap likhte ho all right and if you want to learn more about swamitva scheme so you can search for anu jindal government scheme there i have covered this a uh, scheme in a comprehensive manner in a detailed manner okay so now b k agarwal is the correct answer option a because the chairperson of the committee was asked <coughs> moving ahead to question number 6 which ministry has launched transport for all challenge stage 2 for startups to develop solutions for the issues and problems identified by the cities to improve public transport very easy question but yes transport for all challenge kya hai uske bare mein pad lete hain of course it has been launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs which is headed by mr hardeep singh puri and he is also the minister of petroleum and natural gas right and uh, the idea the objective behind challenge is uh, to develop solutions for the issues and problems identified by the cities to improve the public transport uske naam se clear hai transport for all challenges to cater to the issues to address the issues related to the transportation sector all right objective is to enhance the mobility experience co-host and challenge coordinator is the institute for transportation and development policy then uh, knowledge partner is world bank technology partners are startup india and city innovation exchange and city engagement partner is association of state road transport undertaking asrtu राइट right. इससे ज्यादा इसमें पढ़ने की जरूरत नहीं है आप लोगों को सो दैट इज ऑल सो विच मिनिस्ट्री हैज लॉन्च इट इट इज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स ऑप्शन सी विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर मूविंग है टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन इन हाउ मेनी सिटीज द सिटीजन परसेप्शन सर्वे अंडर ईज ऑफ लिविंग इंडेक्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू विल बी कंडक्टेड बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स एक्चुअली दिस सर्वे हैज बिन स्टार्टेड राइट अभी मेरे पास भी एक मेल आया था जिसमें सर्वे करने की ये टू टेक द सर्वे राइट आई होप आप में से भी कई लोगों के पास एक मेल आया होगा फ्रॉम द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स सो दिस मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स हैज लॉन्च द सिटीजन परसेप्शन सर्वे एंड इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ ईज ऑफ लिविंग इंडेक्स 2022 ओके सो 
to capture feedback of citizens about their city this year's survey will be, will be carried out across 264 cities and this is the question kitne cities 264 it will capture and reflect opinions of more than 21 lakh citizens and it has been started by national institute of urban affairs along with the quality council of india right and the ua works under the ministry of housing and urban affairs do remember this as well now it is conducted as part of ease of living index jo ki humne pad liya already and it carries 30% of the marks of the ease of living index it was first conducted in 2022 with the target of 16 lakh responses aur us time number of cities kitne the triple one and now the number of cities has been increased to uh, 264 all right and it helps in directly capturing the citizen feedback with respect to their city livability and other parameters of their cities in which they are living okay so in how many cities it has been launched 264 option e will be the correct answer moving ahead to question number eight which country has hosted the second edition of agriculture ministerial level meeting of the bimstec which is their bengal initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation right in short it is bimstec it is headquartered in its secretariat is located in Dhaka in Bangladesh. So it was India which has ho hosted the uh, second agriculture ministerial level meeting of BIMSTEC and it was hosted by our Union Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Narendra Singh Tomar. Right? This meeting adopted the action plan for strengthening the BIMSTEC agricultural cooperation for the period of 2023 to 27. And it also gave approval to bring fisheries and livestock subsectors under the agriculture working group okay so jo bhi uh, allied sector hai usko agriculture sector ke under lane ke liye bhi isme adoption uh, isme approval de diya gaya hai in this uh, meeting right now talking about bimstech so remember the objective is to accelerate the shared growth and cooperation maine pehle bhi bataya hai for any regional organization the objective is growth the objective is economic cooperation the objective is uh, cooperation in the environment area, cooperation in the export, cooperation in the trade, right? So these are the, uh, you know, basic objective yehi hote. Established 1997 through Bangkok declaration and currently there are seven countries, uh, which are Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Myanmar and Thailand, all right? Its secretariat is located in Dhaka in Bangladesh and as I told you, it is a sector driven grouping. Initially focused on six sectors, which are trade, technology, energy, transport, tourism, and fisheries. Basically, sub chizo pe hota hai, but later on in the year 2008, the focus was expanded to other areas as well, like health, poverty alleviation, terrorism, etc. So let's come back to the question. So India has hosted this meeting. Option A will be the correct answer, but uh, in exam, the question can also be on BIMSTEC. So jo humne BIMSTEC ke baare mein padha hai, that is also important. Question number 9. Pe jate. India will be hosting the 36th board meeting of Stop TB partnership in March 23 under the chairmanship of Union Minister of Health, Dr. Mansuk Mandavia, where it will take place. Kaha pe hoga ye? Right? So remember, it will take place in Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh in 2023. And of course, Stop TB partnership, which means uh, we are working towards stopping the TB. Now, can you tell me what is the target year? of India to eliminate this disease TB. So many times I have told you guys, but yes, agar nahi bhi pata hoga, no problem. I'll tell you in the next class, but let's see. Aap se kitne logo ko pata hai. So talking about the TB partnership. So the objective is to serve every person who is vulnerable to TB and ensure that high quality diagnosis and the related treatment is provided to that person. Okay. It is a public private partnership and is governed by a board and usi board ki meeting hai in India mein, 2023 mein. It was established in 2001 and the secretariat of stop TB partnership is hosted by United Nations office for project services, which is located in Geneva in Switzerland. All right. So where it will take place, it will take place in Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. Option B will be the correct answer. Let's move ahead to question number 10. Where is India's first national uh, repository for life science data, Indian Biological Data Center located? Ye 
रिसेंटली इनग्रेट हुआ है दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट तो रिमेम्बर इंडिया फर्स्ट नेशनल रिपोजिटरी फॉर लाइफ साइंस डेटा विच इज नोन एज इंडिया बायोलॉजिकल डेटा सेंटर इट हैज बिन लॉन्च एट फरीदाबाद इन हरियाणा राइट फरीदाबाद इज अ प्लेस इन हरियाणा एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस सेंटर इज टू अचीव आर्काइव ऑल लाइफ साइंस डेटा जनरेटेड फ्रॉम पब्लिकली फंडेड रिसर्च इन इंडिया राइट तो इसके बारे में ज्यादा डिटेल में जानने की जरूरत नहीं है इट सेंस इट इज इंडिया फर्स्ट एंड दैट इज बाय इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज सपोर्टेड बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी विच वर्स एंड मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हेडेड बाय डॉक्टर जितेंद्र सिंह और राइट and it has been established at regional center of biotechnology located in faridabad it has a data storage capacity about 4 petabytes and houses brahm which is a high performance computing super computing facility right and its computational infrastructure will be made available for researchers who are interested in performing computational intensive analysis all right so that is all about this center and it will be it is being established in faridabad in haryana actually it has been established uh, in faridabad haryana question number 11 pe aa jate hain which organization under the department of fisheries ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying was awarded with india agri business awards 2022 under agri business awards category under fishery sector so it was the only one government organization which has got this award and is national fisheries development board hyderabad there were so many awards which have been given so all those awards are not important only this is important national fisheries development board located in hyderabad agro world 2022 india international agro trade and technology fair was recently organized by indian chamber of food and agriculture it showcased development and modernization achieved by key stakeholders in major sectors like food agriculture horticulture एनिमल हजबेंडी फिशरीज इन लाइट सेक्टर वेयर इट वॉज हेल्प राइट सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको इस क्वेश्चन में मिल गई है अबाउट दिस एंड वन मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन हैज बिन आज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्वेश्चन वेर इट वॉज हेल्प सो इट टूक प्लेस इन न्यू डेली ऑप्शन बी वेर वॉज दी फोर्टी सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल कांग्रेस ऑफ इंडियन नेशनल कार्टोग्राफिक एसोसिएशन वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द नेशनल हाइड्रोग्राफिक ऑफिस विद द थीम डिजिटल कार्टोग्राफी टू हार्नेस ब्लू इकोनॉमी Very straightforward question. It took place in Dehradun in Uttarakhand. Option D is the correct answer. Where was the first investor conclave for opportunities in coal sector recently organized by Ministry of Coal? So it was organized in Indore in Madhya Pradesh. Moving ahead, recently DGFT made amendments in the Foreign Trade Policy and Handbook of Procedures to allow international trade settlement in Indian rupees. This I believe आप सबने पढ़ा होगा और आर बी टू फोर सेवन में भी कवर्ड है ये इट विल अलाउ इनवॉइसिंग पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट और इम्पोर्ट इन आई एन आर अंडर विच मिनिस्ट्री डज डी जी एफ टी फंक्शन कौन सी मिनिस्ट्री के अंडर काम करता है सो इट वर्क अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री हेडेड बाई मिस्टर पीयूष गोयल विच मिनिस्ट्रीज होस्टेड एंड इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन सिटीजन सेंट्रिक एनर्जी ट्रांजेक्शन एम्पावरिंग सिटीजन विद मिशन लाइफ At the Indian Pavilion at COP 27. So, which are the ministries? Actually, it was conducted by two ministries, and these are the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and Ministry of Power. And both ministries are headed by Mr. R K Singh. Option D, A and B only will be the correct answer. Recently, Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh chaired the first ever uh, Joint Society meeting of Autonomous Institutes of Ministry of Earth Sciences in New Delhi. Which of the following are the autonomous institutes under Ministry of Earth Science? So all of these are the autonomous institutes. All of the above will be the correct answer. Which ministry has issued the amendment in revised consolidated guidelines and standards dated for charging infrastructure of electric vehicles? So which ministry uh, can issue it? So it is Ministry of Power. Option B will be the correct answer. and the last question for today to which working professionals national florence nightingale awards are presented every year by the president of india so these awards every year are presented to the nursing professionals which are doing their best to protect our lives option c is the correct answer and that's it for today's session i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section and i will see you in the next session on wednesday goodbye take care and god bless